Now I'm glad it yells at us because I thought I hit record and I hadn't. That could have been bad. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, do you want to show off your handiwork? Here we go. Okay. Trying to make sure that everything looks, you know. Cool. Ta-da! Good morning. Looks pretty and like we have yarn. Like we have yarn. Because, you know, we don't have any yarn. Because, you know, we are running low on a couple of things. Hi. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. You sound so quiet. Sorry. She's not the quiet sister. So when she sounds all gentle, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> sorry. That was probably actually left. Sorry, sorry. We're going to be sorry sisters today, apparently. Ne <laughs> neither one of us are quiet sisters, but... No, but you do, you do this whole like, tee, 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 and I'm like, who is that talking? <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. See, she said sorry again. <laughs> she just said it through laughter, so you couldn't hear it. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in sunny for the moment, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. It, it didn't rain yesterday, did it? Well, okay, so we got freckles on the patio. That's and they right. dried up and freckles on and, the patio and, we got thunder. and they dried up. We got some thunder and stuff too. But that's Bernie like got an inch of rain at the house. What? Yeah. He was like, did it rain up town? And I was like, no. Well, that's like that's like two nights ago there were horrible, crazy thunderstorms in town. Yeah. I don't think I got a thing out in Conesty. So mountains will change everything. Technically, I don't think we're supposed to get rain today, but like every time I check the weather, it changes. Like every five minutes, it's like nothing's coming. Ah, we're all gonna die. That's why, as long as much as possible, I try to make our events in the morning because there is a smaller likelihood of rain in the morning. Not neg, not zero. <laughs> like not negative. I don't know what that is. The negative likelihood of rain. Um, not zero, but smaller. So you know, we go with that. Anyway. I'm looking through some of my stuff. So <coughs> this is full right now. And if you're regular, you know what that means. <laughs> I'm going to drink as much of it as possible while we talk. So by the time you watch this, you're going to say, but it's three in the afternoon. What are you talking about? It is almost 930 here, which means we got started late, but it's almost 930 here in the morning. Ah. Okay, we film before 10 o'clock. So if she has a full thermos of coffee, it's a bad morning. That's that's not voting well for the day. <laughs> that means I got my morning posts up. I probably didn't get all of breakfast and I just got in the car and got my butt to work. So um, we, yes, problems? Nope. <laughs> Faster she answers, the more it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um the more she's just glossing something over but no so you're weaving ends in how fun I, I i figured you know instead of counting it might actually be easier and yet you're making exclamations already so well, i don't know what's going on when you're you know got the sharpest pointiest needle in your your kit did i forward you the you message did. okay yeah. one of our watchers asked a question not necessarily or like or just said hey can you and it wasn't a formal Dear Becky and Lizzie, but since we don't have a formally written Dear Becky and Lizzie letter, I forwarded it to Liz so we could address it if possible. And, and that means I need to find props. No, Should I wait people. while you find props? No, no, or... you, can, you can mention it. You might have to refresh me on it because my brain's slow once I find, you know, anyway. What? Okay. I will read the question or the email thing thing <laughs> i love your podcast so much i do have a question or a favor to ask can you demonstrate how to measure a sock using a sock ruler on toe up or down please when you can i wait carmen and and she doesn't have to wait long because um since we didn't have anything to talk about today i just there's so many i brought the big bag in this week and there's so many projects in it that I'm trying to sift out my socks. There's another one. And here is another one. Okay, so um, I'm still getting used to using the sock ruler myself. And, and as um, I watched, so aside, 
related but not related. Um, I decided yesterday to bind off the bottom of my ranunculus, or at least start I got a little bit on it done today for morning meditation. I had to go back to my own videos to relearn how to do Lori's twisted bind off. And, um, and it reminded me that in the video, I was still very new to Lori's twisted bind off. So it took the course of the video for me to get a rhythm down and for me to get like, so it's my related thing to this is we're still learning about these sock rulers too, because we hadn't had them before. And some people might already be familiar with them, but we can address how we have been using them, or at least how I have been. I don't know if you've been using them. I've, I've you haven't been doing a lot of socks. I but. haven't been doing a lot of socks. And when I stuck my sock ruler in my sock, I was like, yeah, I should still knit for another inch. And then I tried my sock on and I'm like, no, I think I'm good. And then so there's some trial and error, right? Yeah. I put the and heel then, on my sock and went, yeah, I probably should have knit a little <laughs> bit longer. So. All right. So there's general rules of thumb type of thing, which is like an English phrase to say, um, I'm sure it came from something that actually had to do with your thumb, right? But just general guidelines and the, the conventional wisdom on socks for when you're doing toe up or, or cuff down, like when you're doing the foot part, like toe up means you have to figure out when to turn the heel and cuff down means you have to figure out when to start your toe decreases. And there's a general rule of thumb of somewhere between an inch and a half to two inches before the length of your foot, you reach the length of your foot knitting, you wanna start those decreases. So this sock rule from Katrinkles, which is fantastic, it has um, the names at the top, and uh, the measurement starts at the bottom. And running up the center, it has inches on one side and it has centimeters on the other. And then to the far, like as you're looking at it, the far left, it has US sizes for women's shoes and men's shoes. And on the far right, it has European shoe sizes and it has notches on it. Now, I'm fairly certain that that is talking about the total length of someone's foot. So that's the first thing I wanna make really clear is the sock ruler is not saying, hey, if someone's, um, if someone has like, I have a US women's size seven shoe and I can test this in just a second to see, but I'm pretty sure it, it does not mean, okay, if you have a size seven shoe, you should knit all the way to the seven mark and then decrease your toe. I think you're going to have to start a little bit earlier than that. And that's where the inches come in. And again, if you don't use inches, if you use centimeters, the equivalent to two inches is about five centimeters. It's nice having them side by side on this thing. Um, so I would, I would use this if I didn't, if I wasn't using it for my own feet and someone told me their shoe size. I would find the mark on here for their shoe size and use that as the total length of their foot as a best guess. It's probably not gonna be perfect, but as a best guess. And then deduct an inch and a half to two inches. Either, I think it's, it's kind of commensurate. It might depend on the heel you're doing, but it's kind of equal. If, if you're doing toe up, you wanna start the heel turn about two inches shy of the total length of someone's foot. And if you're doing cuff down, then it's from the heel, you, from the heel out, knitting out, you want to start about two inches. I, I would give it two inches because I think, honestly, it's better to have them be a little snugger than too loose because there's neg the negative ease that it might expand for, right? I, I will say, if you're measuring your foot, you need to put this on the floor and have somebody- And that's what I'm about to do. Mar yeah. Like I marked on mine mm -hmm. what my you know foot length was and- and it probably would help to have the base of this against a wall if you're not sure, like if, you're, if your heel is really on it. Like I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, my- You're right at a seven. My toe, my toe goes right, and this, I took my shoe off. This is not with my shoes on, this is sock foot. My toe goes right to the seven, which is funny because when I was younger, and I'm, I'm not actually standing flat on it, but- Well, kind of. Okay, move your foot, I wanna see something. Okay, we're at about seven and a half. 
That's about an inch and a half. She marked where my pinky toe was. Well, where you're actually, I marked where the seam on your oh. sock decreases, and it's right about an inch. And, a half. and I'm wearing machine made socks. Right yeah. Now. But, um, and, and I want to say, I start my decreases. I'm looking in here. I start my decreases at six and a half or seven inches, which is about where Liz just marked. But the, the US size seven is up at nine or nine and a quarter inch. And, and I started about seven or seven and a half for my decreases. I think seven is the, is the magic mark for me to start my heel or my decreases. I, I know that some she took a breath. So some people have um, like a paper one or a heavier cardstock type one. If you're making socks for other people and they're available to you, you can always put marks on either the back of it, like, hey, this is where we like to start their heel. This is where we like to start their toes. And you and know. if um if anyone is a, a a more avid sock knitter than us because we have general experience with socks. I have a bunch laid out here. I've made a bunch recently. Doesn't mean I'm the, the aficionado expert because everyone has their way they like to do stuff. Yes. Feel free to contribute in the comments. Um, so on the side here, it says adults should have 10% negative E. So, may, so you may not want to make it your sock, your total sock, as long as your foot. You might want to make it a little shorter because then it'll be snugger on your foot, feel nicer, not rub in your shoe. Uh, measuring approximately one half inch or 1.3 centimeters shorter than foot length and one inch or 2.5 centimeters smaller in leg or foot circumference. So give it room to like actually um, stretch around. Stre yeah, yeah, I was looking for the stretch, stretch around your foot. So my foot length is about nine and a quarter. And if I start my decreases around seven inches, that's over two inches that that's accounting for that that two in like half inch shorter length kind of it's in the middle there somewhere so to show you how this could work on your sock so that's how to use it for people's feet and yes you could totally mark this up if you want to but you might want to mark a piece of paper instead um so i am working on let's take for example this is a cuff down sock that i have mid progress and it's on double points. I'll take off my little double point protector thingy. I'll try not to lose <coughs> my extra double points. So what I would be measuring, this is my heel. And, and if I try to open it up to show you, the heel turn is where like that this is rounded is nice because it can go in from where I'm knitting and I can kind of shove it back and nestle it on so that the base of the heel turn is now sitting on there. And if I look at how far I've gone, I can, I can have the wah, wah, wah music of how much I still have to go. I am just shy of four inches right now, which means I still have a ways to go. I still am trying to get to somewhere between six and a half and seven inches before I decrease my toe. So if we look at the side, like, if I laid this out flat, I might be able to get the same measurement from back here on the heel with measuring tape or something else, but having something rigid to go in can really help. So I've probably done, I mean, I can, you can, you can also use this flat on the table. Although since the measuring is in the center, sometimes it's hard to know where you're putting things and what things are measuring. Yeah, I've only done, I've done about two inches since I, I, finish the heel and the gusset decreases. But I'm still just shy of four inches for the total length of the foot. Like measuring up here, like I said, you can kind of lay it flat and measure. Let's see how accurate that is with my wrist ruler here. If I was to lay it, flatten this out, that's intriguing. If I lay this flat and I go to the back of, of the heel here. I'm trying to get it so y'all can see it. Um, I'm getting four and a half inches. Whereas when I put this in to measure this way, from really where the back of the heel will sit, I'm getting four. 
I mean, I think sometimes the best way to, to get a general idea is try it on and, and see how far it is from your toes. But if you don't have the person that you're making it for, you have a good estimate. You have a good estimate because it looks like the floppiness of the heel back there was actually adding some length to my potential measurement. Because you would think shoving this in where the curve is would be the same as, as flopping it flat and measuring. I even thought that might that the measurement when I just use my wrist ruler laying my sock out flat would be um, would be less because of the curvature of this, like would suck up some of the measurement. I don't know. So that's interesting. So that's one thing. Um, it doesn't mean that these are like these are perfect and will measure perfect every time and are so much better than measuring flat. It's just you know, make your best estimations. Uh, I've used books that have, or looked up stuff up online that have certain measurements for, for feet length for shoe sizes, which is what this is providing. And we'll say measure such and such a length. And I'm wondering, so I tried just folding it over flat. I'm gonna try just folding it flat. So the bottom is showing and do my wrist roller that way. Experiments are fun. So, so, fun. so fun. How's your, how's your weed weeding I, going? I'm getting a pile of ends. Okay, if I, instead of folding it flat and measuring on the side, if I measure from the heel turn more across the bottom, I'm getting closer to four inches. So that just goes, if you're not gonna buy the fancy one, um, lay it flat with the heel turn up here, not flat on the side like this. That's doing something different for me. If I lay it more flat like this, so I can only see the heel turned down, not all of the flap back here, I'm getting more accurate measurement. Good to know. Good to know. I mean, I would love if y'all bought our funky donkey sock rulers, but not everyone has the ability to do that, especially when we are um, talking about people outside the US because we don't ship outside the US. You'd have to find it from a different supplier, which is fine. We're not going to say don't buy anything if you can't get it from us. We would love to sell it to you. So, um, all right, other stuff I have here. I have, this is a toe up that I'm already past the heel. So I'm not so much worried about the fit of, of the foot. In fact, I haven't tried this on. I'm just assuming it's hopefully close to the one I've already made, but I can still use this to see how high my cuff is going. If I stick it down in here and settle it down and nestle it into my heel right there. This is how high up my heel is going. Most heel turns and toes have some kind of rounded quality to them. So that could look like the bottom of, of a foot, but it's actually my cuff. And it, it, it works the same way as you're doing now for mm -hmm. toe up. Like you yeah, stick it I in. I can do it in that one too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you stick it in and then you can measure, you know. I'm doing a little better on this cuff than I am on that foot because I have, I'm just over five inches from the heel on this. Once I don't need to measure my cuff so much, really. I mean, I might compare it to that one, but I try to use the rule of thumb that if I fold it at the heel, unless I'm doing an ankle sock, which I am with the ones I just showed you. Um, I try to make sure that my cuff goes to where the toe decreases are on my foot before I start the, like an inch of ribbing or inch or two of ribbing so that they're kind of equal balance foot to cuff. But you can make the cuffs any length you want. They are washing. Oh, again, goody, goody. yay. Probably, um, I'll talk to you later. Okay. They're doing stuff outside. Okay. So here is, these are toe up, similar pattern to this one. Have not gotten to the heel turn yet. Hoping to get to the heel turn soon. But let's try this with this guy. I'm going to nestle it in. Do, do, do. I am really close. It looks like when I nestle this in, I'm just over six inches. This, I'm, me, I'm doing less than an inch probably um, until my heel turn on these. And I wanted to try a different heel on these than on my other stripey socks. So that will be fun. It's just finding time because I'm not only knitting socks right now. I've got a lot of other things going on. But that's how I would use this one to know where, I, and I'm, I'm trying not to stretch it too much. 
I'm trying not to stretch it too much um, to get an accurate measurement. I mean, if I stretched it a little, then I would get the idea of how it would be on my foot. But you never know. It's, it's this in conjunction with trying it on if it's for you, I think is the best bet. So that's how to, you think we covered enough on that? I think we did. For the moment, that gives you an example. As, as uh, Kathleen would say, we're QVCing it for you. We're, we're Vanna Whiting it. We're giving you a description. So that's one thing, that's fun. So, um, and I'm gonna say, we're gonna film for a couple more minutes here so that um, not much longer than a few more minutes just because we gotta get set up out there. And if they're power washing outside, we need to get our stuff out and yes. like claim our space that either they have to power wash before we open, which is in 15 minutes, or they have to wait till another day because we have business to run. So I started, Y'all get a mini Tuesday today, and then we'll see what happens over the weekend, which by the way, on the weekend, we have our virtual Sunday sit and stitch. So I might make a lot of progress on something, Yeah. but you'll see the in between right now, one to 5 PM Eastern standard U S time, um, on both Facebook live and, um, zoom. And you get into zoom with a shop phone number. 828-877-3550. And there is also a sit and stitch tomorrow night on Zoom, same phone number, 7 to 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, I started I started my sleeve. I don't know if you can tell, like if I hold this out, Ooh, how much I've done. You've gotten done. Well, the movie that maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't have watched. Um, I, I knit this while I was watching it. And I have gotten a little bit done. Um, ooh, do you have the scale anywhere close by? I Remember, I have scale. two skeins left. I'm probably pulling all the remaining skeins of this yarn off the market until I finish the sweater, just in case. Because I am, it started on row 50 something. I'm on row 80 something right now, but I have to go to row like 100 and blah, 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 something for even a shorter sleeve for this. And I, Okay, I've only used I've only used 25 grams. I the way it was the way this has been balled up, I'm like, I've used half of it and I only have a few inches. I've used a quarter of my ball. I think I'm gonna need more than two skeins to finish. I, this, I think that we'll see. That's another dear Becky and Lizzie thought is if you really need to know how much yarn you have, the best way is to weigh it. Weigh it. Kitchen scale from Walmart. Yeah. We have several in the shop. They can transport to home and, and here, not expensive. And, oh, I just turned it off, but, but I already measured this, but, um, but it, just it make helps sure me it's know. In grams. Yes. You have to, um, whatever unit you're measuring it in, make sure you understand what portion of the ball that is. So a lot of them are packaged in 50 grams and hundred grams. And, um, so we make sure it's in grams and not like fluid ounces or something like that. So, um, well, and 100 grams is 3.5 ounces, not fluid, ounces. So if you do ounces, you can set it for that, but you have to know how to divide that. Oun ounces gets a little bit wonky because 3.5 ounces, how, how much further can you break that down? And most scales don't do mm -hmm. less than, you and know. And 100 or 50 grams, yeah. for me, the math is easier in my head. Yeah. Like I have 75 grams left of, of this, which is great. I have um, knit... Everything's about four inches right now. Um, I've knit close to four, in, just over four inches of my sleeve. So, and I think I saw in the instructions, there's a spot where it's like, if you want shorter sleeves, do this now. And I'll see what I have when I get there. It could be that I'm good with the sleeve length at that point, because I think I'm doing a size five and size five and six have the same instructions for the sleeves. And so far there've been no decreases in these sleeves it's partially to help keep the pattern repeat going. So it could be that these will just be nice little balloon sleeves or super loose. I don't remember from the pictures. So I'm discovering it as I go. Um, so that's one thing I can share with y'all. Um, the other thing I'd like to share with y'all is how my bind off is going. I got a double point out to like help with this twisty thing. Double points are amazing. Happening. You need to twist the loop, the, the um, needle like all the way around to be doing this twisted bind off thing. And it's beautiful. And once you get the rhythm of it, it's pretty cool. But when you first start it and you've got a cable hanging from your other needle, oh, it is a pain in the butt. 
So I actually pulled some of what I knit this morning out because I was in this rhythm and it was super loose. And I was like, Ugh. and then as I went, I started making it tighter, like without realizing it, because I was getting into the rhythm of it. And when I stopped and took pictures, I went, that's too tight. So it's supposed to, to pull be. It out. So I, I, well, it was easy to, to tink. Okay. It was actually very easy to tink. It's just getting your needle in underneath the bind off as you're pulling out stitches. But um, look, it's see-through, but this is how my bind off is going so far. Finally got back to my ranunculus. Um, it's gonna take me most of today whenever we're not doing stuff to finish this or tomorrow night. But that is what the bind off is looking like. I think this is gonna be pretty. I like it. It's I gonna mean, look so awesome. It might not be as long as I'm thinking because I think the needle is pulling the weight of it down a little bit, but I gave up. I lost the will to knit on the ribbing at the bottom. So it's going to be this long. And then I can do the sleeves and maybe, maybe finish something. I have two sweaters right now that have a good potential of me finishing kind of soon. <laughs> I, if I finish shoulder straps, can can you show people what one of the ends woven in versus ends not woven in looks like? Have you finished weaving? I, I've Are you finished some? So like this just has a couple of ends, and this has even more. So ends that's what she's and... just so, so you know what she's weaving in over here. All like when you make a granny square and you change colors every layer, you've got ends to weave in. So that's the inside of what she we showed you on Tuesday, and um. Yes, you can crochet in as you go, kind of, with some I, of this, but I like reinforcing it, not, I, not just locking it in. I like going back and forth. I crochet over my ends, mm -hmm. but the thing is, is if your stitch pattern is looser than like a whole row of crochets over it, yeah, then I go and I figure out like my circle, the, the second row, is fairly easy to just crochet in because it's every stitch. Yeah. But and then there's space, there's ones it, that are more spaced Once you out, start right? getting a whole lot of spaces, it's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't secure it as well. And so then, some then I have to go wind it in. Some granny squares will have, like the, some of the ones you were testing had much more lacier options oh, to them. Yeah. And when they've got lots of chains turning corners and doing things, like there's nowhere to lock it in. Or you have to be really creative with how your ends are woven in because there's like that one, at least you've got some, the base of some single crochets around the edges. But I've done ones but where it's like a whole lot of I have to take my needle and snake it down to another spot to lock it down because there's Here's. nothing around it to lock it in. Yeah. So this, this one was pretty it's called being creative loose. It's just all chains and it's very pretty. It's pretty, but there's really where the heck do your ends go? Yeah. Okay. It's like, but you I have all these out. ins and uh, yeah. yeah, you figure it out. It's all good. And so I still um, like this one. that and the colors are pretty on that too. Yeah, that would very much be a wear lots of at least one layer underneath if you and made that have to a block bodice. That. Shocking. Sometimes, sometimes you do block crochet, not all the time, but yeah. sometimes. Um, so if you have a question you would like us to address, we have done a little more of the hands-on tactile, like you can't see all the details from over there, but um, we've done the winders and swifts now and we've done the socks rule. If there's something else we can help you with, um, I wanna say we might've in the past had suggestions of like gauge. I've made, a, um, I've made a tips and tricks video on that because our gauge swatchers that you can lay on top, it's really hard for us to show you with this format, how that works. But I think I've made a video on that on my tips and tricks channel. And they're, they're sister channels. So you can dabble back and forth between to find the things you need to. So um, yeah, I'm trying to think, but yeah, if you want something else you want us to talk about, you can write us a letter and that the address is 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. And if you'd like to get some, a question to us faster, you can use the vehicle known as email. And email Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. Yes. If I ever get something and I notice that it's something we might want to talk about on a Thursday, I forward it to her. But it's more direct to just send it directly to her. So I hope that was helpful. And I have a whole nother sock I need to start too. There's so many things, so many things. Ah, so fun. I get to it if I can. I have a lot of computer work I should do today though. So Yay. I keep trying to check stuff off. I need to finish 
making classes for next month. I'm halfway there. I think I figured it out, but I need to put that together and get it out on social media and stuff. So um, that's more of my stream of consciousness. At this point, we're going to let y'all go. Um, we might have only gotten in like a half hour today or something, but I hope it's entertaining and keeps you company and all that good stuff. And we get to go see, I'm hearing lots of noises outside. So we get to go see what is going on out there and what accommodations we'll have to make to run our business today. <laughs> Cause that's been a thing lately. And um, we have, by the time this is up, it might already be passed, but um, roughly every other Thursday, we have a drop-in help time if you're local. For $20, you can come outside and get help on projects. Um, I say roughly, because one of the months coming up, there might be three of them in a month because they alternate with the intro knit and intro crochet. Like the first full week of every month, I'm doing intro knit um, Tuesday, Thursday, and the third full week of every month, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a Tuesday, Thursday intro crochet session. And the, the weeks that we're not doing those, we have drop in help. M mildly confusing, but I want to say it's, um, I want to say it's September. The September starts in the middle of the week. So we have an extra drop in help time because I'm not going to start intro knitting until we have a full week of September. So at July and September both have the the five Saturdays the extra and five stuff Sunday. happening. Like so, it's a lot. Um, when in doubt, if you're local, I would check our calendar um, either on Facebook or on um, our sundragonartandfiber.com because I am attempting to keep those up to date now. I, I didn't for like two years because COVID, you know, and COVID's still here, but we're we're trying new stuff. So. If you, if you ever question why I'm tired, <laughs> it's because I'm trying to keep track of more stuff. And if you say, well, why doesn't Liz help? She is doing so many other things here at the shop. We, oh we my both gosh. only have one job, but that one job is about 15 billion things. There's lots of things under, and we even have helpers who come and hang out and help. And, and we're still, there's a lot. So we appreciate y'all. We hope you appreciate us. And, um, Come visit us on Zoom this weekend or visit the shop if you're local and we'll see you next week. All right, bye-bye. Like, subscribe, ring of the bell, feed the algorithm the cookie. That was the best comment. Oh yes, thank you, Shelby Rose. <laughs> Algorithms and cookies and we have people walking up I even know. though we have five minutes till the I shop know. opens. So we love y'all. Have a good weekend. Woo!